Just the other week, Epic had their State of Unreal 2022 keynote presentation, which went over more details of Unreal Engine 5, and wow, this is truly going to be a game changer for the gaming industry as a whole. Now, if you own an Xbox Series X or a PS5 and an OLED TV and you have not checked out the Matrix Awakens Unreal Engine 5 experience yet, then honestly, what are you doing with your life? Just wanting to make sure you're watching Tubi in the best possible quality? Seriously though, if you have the ability to run Matrix Awakens and have not done so yet, go download it now. It is for real the most eye-opening experience for where the future of gaming is about to go. If you do not have the ability to download and play for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description with the video of the playthrough. Pause this video and go watch that first. It's 10 minutes long and it's very important for the rest of this conversation. When viewing this demo, it's important to note that none of these people are actors. They are all computer models, made up of individual polygons. They are actually all metahumans, which is Epic's new human creator tool that you can run today using your computer web browser. All the heavy lifting is done on their backend server, so you should be able to check this out and play around with it regardless of your PC specs. MetaHuman is basically a character creator like in Skyrim, but you can export these characters and use them directly in Unreal Engine 5 to make games. This is just one tool that is going to help indie game developers like myself have the ability to create photorealistic games and allow bigger studios to spend more time on other aspects of their game. MetaHuman is cool and all, but the two biggest features of Unreal Engine 5 that I'm excited for that will allow for bigger, better, more photorealistic gaming experiences are Nanite and Lumen. Nanite is a system that dynamically controls the level of detail of objects and scenes. Computer generated images are made up of many, many triangles. The more triangles in a scene, the longer it takes for that scene to render. Let's look at Pixar for an example. For years, they have had beautiful CGI in their films, but games have yet to come close to that level of detail. This is because a single frame in a Pixar film can take up to 24 hours to render. Let's look at this segment from sciencebehindpixar.org. I'm a little confused on the whole rendering process, Jay asks. They said it takes at least around 24 hours to render one frame, and that there are 24 frames in a second. If you take a 100 minute movie, then it would take around 400 years to render that many frames. I understand that they would have many machines, but even with 400 machines, it would still take a year just to render. My best guess is they have around that many machines, or maybe more, and they render as they go so they don't have to wait a year after finishing the movie to render, but I would appreciate a little more explanation. Peter from Pixar replies, Pixar has a huge render farm, which is basically a supercomputer composed of 2,000 machines and 24,000 cores. This makes it one of the 25 largest supercomputers in the world. That said, with all that computing power, it still took two years to render Monsters University. That's some pretty crazy stuff. Games, on the other hand, typically run at 30, 60, or 120 frames per second. As you can imagine, in order to achieve those higher frame rates and continue to push graphics to the extreme, developers need to manage how many triangles are being rendered at any given time. This is where level of detail comes in. Level of detail, in short, is a technique used to maximize the amount of triangles being rendered in any given frame. The idea is that the farther away an object is, the less detail you are able to see naturally. Because of this, there's no point in rendering all of the triangles needed to make an extremely detailed model when viewed from far away. So artists end up making multiple versions of the same model that are going to be rendered for various distances from the camera. This is how games such as Grand Theft Auto are able to achieve such beautiful viewpoints that seem so full of life. Because of this level of detail technique requiring making multiple models for the same object, if a change ever needs to be made to the design of that model, artists now need to update each and every level of detail model for that object. This results in a lot more work than you may have initially thought, which is time that could be spent elsewhere. Nanite changes the game as it has the ability to dynamically change the level of detail of objects during runtime. So now artists can focus on making only one single model for each object, and Unreal Engine 5 will handle the level of detail optimization automatically. As you could probably guess, this is going to be a big time save in the game development process. The other big feature I'm excited about in Unreal Engine 5 is the new lighting system, Lumen. Lumen is a system that solves the global illumination problem in game development. Global illumination is when light bounces off surfaces. This is already being simulated in our Pixar film example, and is another reason why frames in those films take so long to render. Up until Lumen, games have simulated this global illumination by faking it out. 
What is done is a process called light baking, where time is spent during the development process to pre-render lighting in scenes in the form of a light map, and then that light map is placed over the existing textures. This is typically why not all objects in games can be moved around, because if they were interactable and could be moved, you would expect the shadows to move as well. But this fake method is not real time, so the lighting would not update. As stated by Paulo Souza, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong, we believe that the next generation of games and simulations will need advanced lighting, such as time of day or lighting that reacts to world changes. The CGI industry has been pursuing a definitive solution for real-time global illumination and reflections for decades, which is why real-time global illumination has been called the holy grail of computer graphics. Lumen uses a fully dynamic, indirect lighting pipeline, which means that the scene geometry, material, and light properties can change at any time. Because of that, Lumen greatly approves artists' workflow. Not only does this mean lighting updates instantly, but it also removes the wait for build times to get the final lighting quality. In addition to that, Lumen lit scenes need no reflection cube maps, since Lumen fully replaces other methods and is able to render geometrically precise reflections. Again, Lumen, Nanite, and MetaHuman are going to drastically reduce the development time for certain aspects of the game development process, allowing for both indie developers as well as large studios to build bigger, better, more photorealistic experiences than they would be able to with current game engines. So surely this is going to be a game changer for the VR experience, right? Well, unfortunately, not quite yet. These systems are incredible and are going to be a game changer for the gaming industry regardless, but the VR headset tech is not quite there just yet. Both Nanite and Lumen are not supported for VR applications in Unreal Engine 5 at this time, which makes sense given the current headset hardware specifications. Combine that with the fact that VR apps take twice as much rendering power to render any scene, one for each of the eye lenses, you can probably guess we have a ways to go before the tech is powerful enough. That all being said, I do believe that eventually, maybe even by 2030, we will have VR experiences available that are on the level of Matrix Awakens. It's one of the reasons I think it's a bit too early for any kind of these metaverse real estate investments. While they may prove to be a valid investment asset at some point in the future, I feel like anything that's being offered now is going to be quickly outshined by future potential tech. Getting headsets that can support and run Unreal Engine 5 experiences that are as photorealistic as the Matrix Awakens is where I believe the industry is going to inevitably go. And that is always my mindset when I'm analyzing any VR related news, whether it be gaming, social, or productivity. I believe that we are in the very early stages of this industry, and it's going to be exciting to see how it all unfolds. If you made it this far and enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to help out the YouTube algorithm. I gotta go back to work on Mod Mask, my VR game that I'm developing in Unity. I can't wait to eventually pursue creating a VR game in Unreal Engine 5. It's going to be a while, but it'll be fun to keep up to date with the news. Thanks, and see you next time.